Connections, where your questions about climate change are answered by USGS scientists. I'm your host, Jessica Robertson. Why are we having to about global In this episode, we were greeted with true Southern hospitality as we traveled through North and South Carolina. Let's go ahead and see what questions they had about climate change. Hello, my name is Amber. We're currently in Charleston, and I would like to know how does climate change affect the coast? Where can I learn more about it, and how can it affect me in the future as well? Great question, Amber. I'm John Haynes, a geologist with the U.S. Geological Survey. And our coastal communities, natural resources and beaches are some of the most vulnerable places to climate change, particularly sea level rise. Already, storms, erosion, flooding are impacting these coastal areas, and with sea level rise, they'll reach further inland. They'll happen more frequently and probably with more intensity. You live in the low country and it's named that for a reason. It's particularly vulnerable to sea level rise impacts. Fortunately, there are lots of information resources from the USGS, NOAA, state agencies, and academic institutions. I suggest you go to the web and search for South Carolina and sea level rise and you'll find lots to learn about. I hope that answers your question. I have a question for you. What are scientists currently doing to help communities prepare for the effects of global warming in our area of rivers and streams. I'm glad you asked that question. I'm Bob Hirsch, hydrologist with the U.S. Geological Survey. We know that climate change does influence water resources. We, it changes the amount of evaporation that occurs. It, it changes the kind of precipitation occurs, less snow, more rain. Uh, it changes the timing of snow melt. All of these things can contribute to changes in our water supply for our farms, for our factories, for our cities. Uh, it can also change the size of, of floods, uh, which are so important for the safety of our citizens. The USGS contributes to helping to understand understand this problem uh, by collecting data at over 7,000 rivers across the nation. The connections are complicated and we're working to try to understand them. I'm Pearl Fry from Bishopville, South Carolina, and this is my garden. They always say plant trees. How can I um, do something that I, I know that it's having an effect on the climate, the climate change because I don't know that much about it. Mm-hmm. But then I would love to know what could I do. Hey, uh, Pearl, you ask a great question. Yes, planting more trees and restoring uh, native vegetation will help with uh, climate change. That is because plants uh, absorb CO2 out of atmosphere and convert CO2 into carbon and store the carbon in plants and in soils. Um, Well, definitely my question for the scientists would be like, you know, what do we know now that we didn't know back then during President uh, Jimmy Carter's um, reign? I'm Jonathan Smith, the program coordinator of the Geographic Analysis and Monitoring Program here at USGS. And since the 1970s, we've gathered a lot more information on the characteristics of the Earth. Since the early 1970s, we've launched six Landsat satellite systems that take pictures of the Earth and allow us to analyze the changes in vegetation and in glaciers over time. Also since the 1970s, we've tremendously increased our computational power that allows us to analyze very large data sets in order to identify the changes that have occurred. In short, we've had both increases in the data that we can analyze and the ability to analyze this information through our computers. That's it for this episode. Join us again next time for Climate Connections. Any questions at all that you have? So, let's go first. Will climate change? Will climate change? Will climate change?